All right. So what we're going to do, uh, we don't have a, a lot of time, but in my speech, I talked about, you know, designing your life, taking time to ask yourself a couple questions. And um, but before we do that, I think it's important to get to know the people that you're around and build strong relationships. So I want you to find one partner that's not at your table that is either taller than you or shorter than you and partner up with them. That's not at your table. Ready, set, go. Ready, set, go. Find one person, one person, one person. Here you go. Yeah, but we're going we're gonna to stand up. Yep. Let's see. Okay. Do we have, everyone has a partner? You got a partner? Okay, perfect, perfect. All right, g give your partner a handshake and say, I'm glad to see you. Okay, perfect, perfect. Now, all I want you to do is introduce yourself, first name, last name, and where you are from, where you were born. Ready, set, go. All right, perfect. Raise your hand if you're from the same uh, state as your partner. Raise your hand if you're from a different state than your partner. Raise your hand if you're from a different country than your partner. Okay, perfect, perfect, perfect. Now, what I want us to do next is I want you to share, this is good stuff right here, I want you to share your favorite color and your favorite food. Okay, ready, set, go. Orange macaron. Okay, okay. <laughs> All right, perfect. If you hear me snap once, if you hear me snap twice, okay, here we go. Let's see. What's your favorite color? Orange. Any oranges in here? Any oranges? Okay. Uh, what's your favorite food? Spaghetti. spaghetti. We got any spaghetti lovers in here? No? What's your favorite food? Prime rib. Any prime rib lovers in here? Okay, we got one right here. Okay, okay. All right. Now, I believe in having some fun. So let's go back to back. What we're going to do, um, can I uh, be my partner real fast? We're going to go back to back and we're going to play the old school game, rock, paper, scissors. Okay? So we go right here. On the count of three, you're going to turn around with whatever you have. So it's going to go like this. One, two, three. Oh, all right. Okay, okay. I'm going to beat you this time. Ready? One, two, three. I bet you I'm, I'm a winner. Okay. So, everyone, let's go back to back. Okay. Back to back. Back to back. Here we go. On the count of three, turn around with what you got. Turn around with what you got. Here we go. Ready? One, two, three. Oh. <laughs> All right. Here we go. Turn around one more time. Here we go. One, two, three. Uh. All right. One more time. One more time. One more time. Here we go. Ready? One, two. Two, three. Perfect, 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 perfect. All right, face your partner. Face your partner. Now, next question. Next question we're going to do. Um, we're going to I'm gonna give each person a minute and a half, okay? And I want you to share um, what motivates you to be better every day. What motivates you to get up every day? Right, we're good. we went from like level one. Now we're like level two ish, three ish. Right. So what motivates you? And who inspires you? Okay. Ready. Minute and a half. One person's going, and then the next person get a minute and a half. So don't be jumping back and forth. Here we go. Ready. Set. Go.
If you hear me clap once, if you hear me clap twice, um, if you didn't finish, you should have sped up a little bit, okay? Um, all right, so the next person, next person. Uh, okay, see, see? My dad, my dad always taught me. He said, Shamil, he would always tell me, he said, Shamil, you have two ears, one mouth. You need to listen more than you talk. Some of you guys were talking as I was explaining, and you guys didn't get it. So did, did both of you guys share? Raise your hand if both of you guys share. It's supposed to be a minute and a half for one person. You're supposed to dive deep for that minute and a half, and then the next person's going to go for a minute and a half. That's okay. That's okay. So next game. Here we go. Quick game. So we'll go like this. Palms out. So palms out right here. My finger is going to be right here, and then your finger is Wait, down like that. Are you putting on because some people didn't listen? Oh, you didn't go? No. Oh. Sorry. That was, uh, I, I'm, don't beat me up. Don't beat me up, okay? <laughs> don't beat me up. We won't move on, okay? Let's go another minute and a half, okay? And we're going to go a little bit deeper. Both of you guys share. Okay, ready, set, go. Yeah. All right, that's time. If you hear me clap once, if you hear me clap twice, if you hear me clap three times. Perfect, perfect. So I do have a question, so I appreciate you. Um, so my question is this right here. Um, and I ask this, so I speak at school, I speak at different organizations, I speak at conferences. But my question that I always pose to young students and adults is, raise your hand if you have someone, one or two people in your life where they know the depth of your heart, like how you actually feel, the things that you go through. Like raise your hand if you actually have one or two people in your life that, okay, that's good, that's good. That's better than most rooms right there. Because I go to some rooms where I'm asking this question and maybe three hands go up, right? And I know, like, as we walk through life, it's challenging, you know, holding all that stuff in and never getting a chance to, like, tell anyone, right? Now, on the flip end, do you have someone who will just listen? Okay, I, don't, I, don't, I have some friends where I talk, and then they make the conversation about them. I'm like, dude, I told you I wanted to talk about myself. You said you were going to listen, and now we're talking about your problems, right? Like, raise your hand if you have someone that will just listen to you. Anyone? Okay, perfect, perfect, perfect. All right, let's play this next game. Play this Again, real fast. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna have hands down. So right here, right here. On the count of three, I'm gonna go one, two, three. I'm trying to grab her. Ooh, oh. She already got the idea. <laughs> I'm trying to grab. So we go like 
Yep, I'm go ahead scared. put your hand. Yep. What's so your on the count of three. You got oh, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. okay, okay, <laughs> okay. So I'm going to count, huh? Oh, so it's going to be. Oh, God. Well, I think. Turn, turn sideways. Okay. Okay. So on the count of three, I'm going to try to grab her finger before she grabs my finger, and she's going to try to pull her finger away before I can grab her finger. Okay, so it's going to go like this. Ready? One, two, three. <laughs> right? Like that, okay? So, so, ready? Oh, One, oh. two, three, like that. <laughs> like, like that, okay? Here we go. Ready? Okay. I'm going to count it up, okay? Here we go. Ready? One, two, three. Oh. Okay, here we go. One more time. Let's give you a chance to get your get back. Here we go. Ready? One. We got it right there? Okay, here we go. Ready? One. I'm just trying to make sure you guys got the game. Here we go. Ready? One, two, three. Ah. Good, good, good. All right, all right. Here we go. Last thing I want, last question I want you to do with your partner um, is this right here. Is this a, it's a, we're going to go back and forth two minutes, two minutes. So I'm going to say one thing about myself. You're going to say one thing about yourself. And uh, you choose, we're going to do it twice. So we'll go level one stuff. You know what I mean? Like, hey, my favorite color is red. Blue. You can say something totally different, oh. though, too. Okay, so my favorite color is red. My favorite number is five. Um, my football jersey was number seven in college. Blue. Blue. Okay. Okay. Um, my favorite oh, food is shrimp fried rice. Uh, my favorite food is French fries. Okay. Boom. So we just gonna go back and forth for two minutes. Level one type stuff. Like don't go from like, hey, my favorite color is red, and then my dog died two years ago. Like that, <laughs> that's that's too much, right? We're going level one right now. Here we go. Two minutes. Two minutes. Ready, set, go. <laughs> All right, if you hear me clap once, if you hear me clap twice. All right, on this next one, this next one, next for one more minute, I want you to share the things that you want to do before your time is over with on this earth, the things that your dreams, your aspirations, the things you haven't got a chance to do. And share, you know, some things that have been holding you back this year, okay? Some dreams that you want to do, some things that have been holding you back, just like level three Let's pour it all out. Uh, if you guys cry, it's okay. Okay? Here we go. One more minute. Ready, set, go. All right, that's time. If you hear me clap once, if you hear me clap twice, if you hear me clap three times. All right, uh, any of you surprised by some of the answers? Um, anyone? Anyone, um, anyone found some similarities in some of the answers, right? 
anyone found some differences? Some, you know, we were about to have a fight over here, you know, like, <laughs> I'm not going to mention what it was, but we were about to have a fight. And this is what I would love for you guys to take away from this, though. Um, tell me your name one more time. Johnny. Johnny and Cece. Uh, these two are siblings, right? Right? I was, I was like, that's crazy. Like, I, you guys, I told you guys find someone, you know, different, but they found each other. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, they cheated a little bit. But the cool thing that Johnny said, Johnny, right? Johnny said, he said, um, it's actually good because we don't have enough of these type of conversations. And so my challenge for you guys is take this home with you and sit down with your kids and be genuinely interested in their lives, Right? And just go back and forth asking questions. And you'll hear some, some amazing things, you know. My daughter wants to be a vet, a teacher, and a professional soccer player. I'm like, oh, really? She was like, Dad, can I do all that at the same time? I'm like, ah, I don't think that's how that works, right? But I'm like, you can figure it out if you want to, right? So I challenge you guys, do it with your, uh, if you're in a relationship, do it with your partner. And then do it with your kids. Because you'll be surprised of how many things you can learn within that one minute, a minute and a half, right? So uh, find a table to, to sit with your partner. Find a table to sit with your partner. You're staying with them. Here you go. You can be seated. You can be seated. believe in making everything a game, having fun with it. When uh, COVID happened, I had to become the janitor, the math teacher, the science teacher, um, chef, you know, counselor, a little bit of everything, right? And one thing I've learned is if you um, make things playful, uh, kids uh, are able to retain it a little bit better. But I look at adults, we're all just big kids, right? So the game we're going to play I'm going to emphasize this. You don't roll until I tell you to roll, okay? <laughs> so what we're going to do is when I tell you to roll, you're going to roll, right? But we're trying to go from one, two, three, four, five, six. So once you get one, then you move on to two. And once you get two, then you move on to three. And once you get four, you can move on to five. And then once you get five, you move on to six. two. Seven. Okay, not seven, God. <laughs> okay. I'm going to say roll, then you roll, and then if you, if you don't get it, you keep rolling until you get one, two, or three. Okay? Here we go. Here we go. Ready? Roll. And then, oh, my bad. Last one. Once you get one, you yell out one. Okay? All right. You move to two. Okay, here we go. Roll. Okay, you move on to two. Here we go. Pick it up. Roll. Okay, here we go. Roll. You move on to three. Here we go. Roll. You move on. Okay, you move on to two. Roll. Okay, pick it up. Roll. No, you roll when I tell you to roll. Here you go. Pick it up. Roll. Okay, move on to five. Here you go. Move on to three. Here we go. Ready? Roll. Okay, we got two. Move on to three. Here we go. Ready? Roll. Okay, pick it up. Pick it up. Here we go. Roll. Okay, here we go. Pick it up. Pick it up. You on six? He's lying. Okay, here we go. Roll. <laughs> okay, move on to three. Move on. Pick it up. Roll. Three, okay. You on six? Winner, winner, chicken dinner. Everyone give a hand, give a hand, give a hand. No. We're going to have to rock, paper, scissors it up, man. Who, who won? Oh, you won? Okay. Okay, here you go. Here's. Okay. 
for one? Over here. Oh. Okay, here we go. There we go. Now, what we're going to do, I want you to partner. Now you're going to do it with your partner, okay? You can't move on until your partner has one as well. So if you get one, you have to wait till your partner's done, okay? And then once you both get two, then you both move on, okay? Here we go. You're working with your partner. You're working with your partner. Here we go. Dice? Oh, okay. Can, can you? I'm going to throw it. There we, yeah, there we go. Perfect, perfect. Here we go. All right, ready? Here you go, roll. Here we go, roll. Here you go, roll. If your partner's taking too long, tell them to go on. Here you go, roll. Here we go, roll. Yep, pick it up, roll. Yeah. Good. Come on, roll. Here we go, roll. Here we go, roll. Come on. He needs you. He needs you. Here we go. You guys got six again? Man. I'm watching from now. Okay, you won? Okay. All right, we got a winner right here. Everyone give him a hand. Give him a hand. Give him a hand. Give him a hand. Okay. Okay. All right, if you hear me clap once, if you hear me clap twice, if you hear me clap three times. Okay. We could keep playing all day, but we only have 30 minutes. I really want to get into some of the other stuff. But the whole reason why I um, played that game right there, one, it's fun. Um, and then two, when you get your partner involved, you need someone else to, you know, help you out and uh, pull their weight. You know, my man was waiting on, what's your name? Larry. He was waiting on Larry for a long time, okay? <laughs> Larry. <laughs> no offense, Larry, okay? But I don't know about you guys, like, I don't know if you guys have ever lived life like this, though. Um, I hope today goes well. Ah. Uh, I'm trying to get six. Oh, today I had a good attitude. Today I have a bad attitude. Oh, man, I love my kids today. Dang, why can't they get it right? We can't live life like we're rolling dice. Every single day we need to think about the type of attitude we want. Every single day we need to think about the type of attitude we want to show towards our kids. How consistent can we be? It's that compound effect. You know, you put money into the stock market day after day, day after day, day after day. It's a compound effect. It's the same thing with our actions. There's a compound effect with how we treat ourselves, with how we treat our kids, with how we treat our spouse. And we wonder why, oh, man, I love you today. And then our kids aren't giving us the type of reaction we want because we're not consistent. We have to be consistent. We have to know today's going to be a two. Today's going to be a three. Today's going to be a four for me. Today's going to be a five for me. And I say that in a way because guess what? Even if I roll a five or a two right here, I'm going to make it a good day because I choose to make it a good day. I had a sports psychologist when I played um, football at Oklahoma State. The one thing she taught me, you know, because I was, I was up and down. Like football is like a roller coaster for me. One day I had a good practice. One day I had a bad practice. One day I had a good practice. One day I had a bad practice. And she says, Shamil, before you start the day, choose the type of attitude you want for that day because things aren't going to go your way. But if you choose your attitude, you can choose how you see the world. Sidney Portier, he, 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 in his memoir, his book, he talks about how life is like walking with a friend because when you walk with a friend, you either go at their pace or they go at your pace. And I look at life in that same manner. When we don't choose our attitude, life will choose the pace that we're going at. But when we choose the attitude we want, we dictate the pace of life, right? And so I want us to um, pull our phones out, and <clears throat> I'm going to have you guys do um, a, a, an obituary, okay? You guys are like, oh. So the reason why I'm having you guys do that, in the... This book called Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. 
One, habit number two is start with the end in mind. Start with the end in mind. My mom passed away from cancer, and one of the hardest speeches I've ever had to do was sit up there at my mom's funeral and talk about who she was. And when I left that funeral, I was thinking to myself, man, I don't, I don't think I talked about the gifts or anything like that, but I talked about her character, her values, how she was so unselfish, how she was loving. And I thought to myself, when I die, how do I want to be remembered? How do I want my kids to remember me? How do I want my friends to remember me? And we don't, we're not in control of that, but we can be, we can be intentional. I think, I think being the best version of yourself is all about being intentional. That's it. So what I want you to do is I'm going to give you a minute. I want you to write an obituary as, like, you know, how it goes. I, uh, yeah. On your phone. Shamil. In the text, no, in uh, your notes, in your notes. I want you to go back and read it. Okay, get a, get a pen, get a pen. No, you're not old. That's a mindset right there. Okay. <laughs> but I just want you to write how you want to be remembered, okay, for a minute. Ready, set, go. Thirty more seconds, thirty more seconds. Five seconds, five seconds. All right, that's time. That's time. And if you didn't get a chance to finish, uh, I encourage you to take some time um, this week to finish writing it. What I want you to do now is I want you to share it with your partner, if you feel comfortable. Share it with your partner. Here we go. This is take some vulnerability, right? So you go, ready, set, go. All right, that is time. That is time. If you hear me snap once, if you hear me snap twice. So um, the cool part is, uh, what's your name for me? Dina. Dina. Um, you know, I'm not, uh, not going to call anyone out. You know, Dina, she did it but didn't do it right now, you know what I mean? But 
she did do it. What the cool part is, she, uh, she says she had to do it with her counselor during the pandemic, right? Or not had to, but she had you. Uh-huh. Right. Mm. Good. No, that's good, right? I, I bring it up to say because this is a, a practice that, you know, you, you would do if you went to counseling, you know what I mean? And so I hope some of you guys actually took it seriously because I think it's important to start with the end in mind because now you can start backwards, just like money. If you want to make $100,000 a year, um, now you can start breaking it up into to units, monthly, weekly, how much it takes to, to sell or whatever it is, right? But the same thing with our lives, you start with the end in mind. I want to be loving. Well, what do I need to do on a consistent basis to be remembered that way? Oh, I want to be a person who is a servant leader, okay? Do my actions right now reflect that statement right there? I want to be known as a person who, who changes people's lives. Well, do my actions right now reflect that statement right there, right? And the next thought that leads off of that is, if you want to be all those things, what will, what, who will it cost you? Or what will it cost you? And what will it cost someone else if you don't live in that manner? So I want you to write that down. Who will, who will you cost by not living in that way? And what will it cost you if you don't live in a way that you stated, right? How will it hurt you? Who will it hurt? Who will it affect? Who will it impact? Like, think about that right there, okay? I'm going to give you one minute to write that down. Because when you talk about designing your life, these are the questions you have to really dig deep and answer, okay? Here we go. Ready, set, go. Minute and a half, minute and a half. And I understand that was a two-hour session. This is, we only got 15 more minutes. <laughs> My degree was in psychology, so, you know, I could have been a counselor, guys. Twenty more seconds. Twenty more seconds, guys. All right, that's time. That is time. That's time. Okay. Now we're gonna do the same thing we did earlier. I want us to um, close our eyes, and we're going to visualize. It's going to be a little, maybe a little weird. My sports psychology, we visualize a lot of things, you know. So what we're going to do, I want you to close your eyes, put your, put your hands in your lap, palms up, okay? All right, so I want you to take a deep breath. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale, inhale, exhale. Now, 
I want you to put yourself at your funeral. See the casket? See the people that will be there? But this version of your funeral is if you didn't live the life that you said you wanted to live. Now, see the people coming up, each person coming up to share things about you, but they're not sharing the things that you wrote down. They're sharing how you impacted their life in a negative way. They're sharing how it destroyed them seeing you act out of character. See their faces. How does that make you feel? Feel the pain, feel the regret, feel the disappointment. Take a deep breath and then push it all out. Take a deep breath, push it all out. Now I want you to put yourself back at that funeral. Now this time, I want you to see people joyful, celebrating who you were because you lived out your life exactly how you want it. You impacted people's lives, you loved them, you made people laugh, you were servant, you were loving. See the joy on their faces, see the smiles, and hear the words that they're saying right now all because you lived the way you said you were gonna live. Here. Here you go, deep breath. Deep breath, let it all out. All right, go ahead, open your eyes, go ahead, open your eyes. Now there's been, you know, uh, there I could do like a visualization deal, have you guys turn right here, right? You close your eyes, you visualize yourself going farther, and then magically you go farther, right? And so I like to put myself in um, a situation where I can see the, the, uh, the negative outcome, what it's going to cost myself, what it's going to cost other people. Because the truth is, I think, you know, just like losing weight, the knowledge is there. We just don't do it all the time, right? But I think as days go by, we know how we want to live, but we get distracted. We get pulled off course from different things, right? But if you can see the hurt, the pain right now, it helps us to walk that straight path. And the reason why I had you guys write this right now, my hope is you guys put in your reminders and you read it on a consistent basis so it can remind you, hey, this is what I said, and right now I'm not doing it. You know, we can go through goals and all those different things, but I think we need a strong why, a strong reason to do those things right now. The last thing I want us to write down is this right here. It's going to be, um, we need to do some breathing. This may seem a little woo-woo little, little for you, right? But the last thing I want us to do is I want you to write a love letter to yourself a love letter to yourself, because I think the biggest critic we have in our lives is actually that uh, person in the mirror. So I want you to take a minute, two minutes, to write a love letter to yourself. You said four years ago? Mm. Mm hmm I love it. I love it. I love it. Everyone give her a hand. Give her a hand. I love that. Yes. yes. And that's, that is the reason why we're writing this love letter, to let go of the baggage, to let go of the trauma, because we all, like Dr. Brown said, we all, we all have, we all put things in our bag. And if we don't let it go, it'll, it'll overflow, right? So let's take this time to write in your love letter. Think about it from the standpoint of like the things you have been able to overcome.
where you're going in the future, right? Who you are right now. Write those things right now. So where you, where you have came from, where you are right now, and where you are going, okay? Ready, set, go. It's going to be two minutes, three minutes. I lied. We're going we're gonna, to, it's going to be an essay. So dear your name, I love you, and then keep writing after that too. And I'm going to ask you guys to share with your partner, but I'm going to read mine first real fast. It goes, Dear Shamil, I love you. You are pretty amazing, I must say. Your patience with your daughter is improving every day. You are blessed, Shamil. The way you have been able to overcome adversity is something that I'm proud of you for. I'm proud of the person you are becoming. You have wrote down your goals, and you, are, you have been executing them one by one. You're persistent. You face challenges. You are confident. You are a hard worker. Most importantly, I love the way you pour into yourself. Thank you for not giving up on you. Wow. You make me smile, man. You will inspire many people one day. So that's what I wrote to myself. And, you know, I didn't get through all this stuff, but I wanted to make sure we wrote some of this stuff down for the standpoint of this right here. I remember um, 2019, 2017, my last year with the Buffalo Bills, I got a concussion. And I drove home uh, 19 hours from Buffalo, New York, all the way to Tulsa, Oklahoma. And I did what any normal person would do when you get home and driving that far, hyped up on Red Bull, and went to the car wash, right? <laughs> when I went to the car wash, I began to clean the outside, the tires, the front seat, the back seat, underneath. I found like all types of disgusting things. And then when I got to the back, to the trunk, I lifted up the trunk and aha, Tons of baggage, right? And, I, and me, trying to be clever, instead of taking out all the baggage out, I lift up the bags. And 
and I started to vacuum underneath the bags, but I couldn't get everywhere. And I heard a little voice say, Shamil, this is what you're doing in your life. You're holding on to baggage that I'm trying to get you to let go of. We're not able to be the parent we're supposed to be. We're not able to be the spouse we're supposed to be. We're not able to be the human we're supposed to be by carrying all the baggage around. We're supposed to let it go. But a lot of times we look for external sources to solve our problems instead of diving within. And part of designing your life is diving within and figuring out who you are, what you want, where you've been, where you're going, what beliefs that, that, that you have right now, how do you need to let it go, what boundaries you need to set up. What do you need to do on a consistent basis to be healthy, fully recharged for the people around you? Because honestly, it's selfish if you don't. But we think the opposite. We think it's selfish if we do. But it's honestly selfish if we don't. And so I'm just trying to spark an idea, a thought, um, an action, a decision to start that process because it's a journey, right? Go to a counselor, start making boundaries for yourself, go to bed. <laughs> start eating the right foods, start surrounding yourself with different people. Little bit by little bit, adjust your attitude. I heard a um, pastor say, you know, people don't need to go to the chiropractor. They need an attitude adjustment, right? A gratitude adjustment. Like, that's what we need in our lives. And I hope, just like I was driving my, my son's car, I was getting off path, I just hope in this moment right now, we all turn the wheel and get back going straight, okay? So the last two minutes, I just want you to share your love letter with your partner, and then you guys are free to go, because we're done at two, right? Oh, never mind, I lied, okay. We got more to go. Okay. So go ahead and read to your partner. Ready, set, go. Read to your partner. I looked at this. All right, one more minute, one more minute. All right, if you hear me clap once, if you hear me clap twice, okay, it's power and sharing. Because um, one of the chapters in my book right there, uh, Dear Ricky, is supposed to be uh, affirming words from a mentor's heart. Uh, and one of the, the chapters is, Dear Ricky, you are not alone. And a lot of times we feel alone because we don't choose to share with other people. And then when we do choose to share, that other person shares and is like, oh, man, we're actually going to the same thing, right? So uh, I'm going to go around the room, and I want a couple people to share their love letter, okay? Okay? Not everyone, like, raise their hand at once. 
Over there? Okay, I'm coming. Okay, okay. <laughs> All right, here we go. So mine is, dear Maribel, I love you. You deserve better. I am so proud of you for taking the first step to healing and to start new. I know you could do it. There will be hard times, but... You are worth it. You matter. You are important. I just want you to know that I love you. Whenever you feel like giving up, stop. Take a deep breath because you matter. That's strength right there. That's strength. Thank you for sharing. Thank you. Okay, so I guess this takes some strength. So um, it's it's a love letter just because it's just a reminder of just how far I've come and where I'm at now. And I'm not going to be the same person that I am today that I am, I'll be next year. And that's always my hope. <laughs> Whew. So hope and dreams were focused on all the wrong things. Wanted, wanting to create with my own power in hand what God placed in my heart, not knowing of the one who placed it there. It took God breaking me into position to know who he really was and to desire his vision for my life. It took a savior, Jesus, to come into my life to tell me who I was, how he loved me. He changed me from the inside out and continues to do so. I'm only here because he saved me from bitterness hate, anger, depression, and just spiritual death. So that's my love story. That's a personal love story to me, and I continue to share it and give hope to others. So. Perfect. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Are you ready? Okay, okay. I appreciate you sharing. Thank you. Dear Dupree, I'm so proud of where you are going and how far you have come. I want you to know it's not your fault for what happened to you, how you were taken advantage of, but understand, I love you because you were strong, wise, and continue to lead your life with love. Now, understand that it is time. I understand that I love you, and it's time that you pour into you and your life. You are such an amazing person who cares beyond measure and has such a youthful spirit. I love how you can find the positive in any situation and use it to resolve any conflict. I love your eyes of truth, your heart that nurtures, and your mind that guides. I love how you continue to protect others and now it's time to protect us and continue to love. I'm going to ask a couple more people, but from what you've seen from one, two, three people, you've seen strength, but you also see a lot of things that you will never, a lot of things you will never see just from observing someone. It's a lot of pain inside, a lot of hurt, a lot of things that we need to let go of, a lot of things, you know, for me, I realized, uh, I was talking to my counselor, and it, um, it hit me that I was still operating as 15-year-old Shamil in a 33-year-old body. Your, your age doesn't make you a man. Your age doesn't make you a woman. What makes you a man or a woman is really taking the, 
the time to do the deep work within and change some things and let go of some things. Because the past, most of the time, it's not your fault. But where you're going, that's your responsibility, right? Man, we can't love people fully if we don't take the time to let go of the things inside of us. This is an emotional process. So I appreciate you sharing. I appreciate you sharing. I appreciate you sharing. Let's go one more person um, because I think there's strength in sharing. You know, from a football background, you know, we all want that. We all say, hey, in crunch time, I'm going to show up. In crunch time, I'm going to show up. But we really don't mean that. Because what, what comes with the other side of failing is embarrassment. What comes with the other side of failing is regret, shame. But there's power in doing this right here in front of people that your peers or in front of associates, in front of friends. There's, there's power in sharing. So let's go one more person. Let's give a hand for everyone that shared one more time. Here we go. Let's go one more. Let's, this is a father's summit. So one more man. Let's go right here. Can you share for me? Sure. Okay. Dear Hector, I love you for who you inspire to be, where you come from, which helps you to be a better person, father and husband. Love you for consistently changing to be better for yourself. Love to see you accomplish the goals you set and resetting when you don't reach them. Appreciate you, appreciate you. I'm gonna leave you guys with this right here. Um, I know this is like a, feels like heavy in here right now. It's supposed to be, it's supposed to be. I heard this story, um, about a man who lived in the house. Um, and once he get, went in the house, there was a power outage. And all the lights shut out. And he stumbled, and his keys fell and hit the ground. And now it's completely pitch black in his house. And he stumbled, he's looking around, can't find it. And he's like, I got an idea. I got it. There's a light outside the light post. I can go out there and look for my keys. Some of you guys may be like, whoa, that doesn't make any sense. Your keys fell inside. But in his mind, he was like, there's a light out there, so I'm going to go look. So now he's going to look outside, and he's searching and searching. And if you're doing what you're supposed to do outside, sometimes people ask you to help. There's nice people in the world. So a guy went up to him and was like, hey, what are you looking for? I'm looking for my keys. He's like, oh, okay, I'll help you. So now they're both, like, looking on the ground, looking for it. And then the guy, he kind of got tired. He was like, okay, can you point me in the right direction of the keys? He was like, well, the keys are in the house. I dropped them in the house. And the dude was like, why are you looking out here? And the guy said, I thought it would be a good idea. There's light out here, right? And some of you guys may chuckle at that right there, but isn't that what we do a lot of times when we're going through something? Instead of uh, digging and, and searching in the dark, we find an external source where there's light, it looks good, and we try to fix the problem. I mean, I know I do that a lot. I know I struggle with that. Oh, man, I'm, I'm struggling with my relationship. Let me go upstairs and play some video games. <laughs> man, I'm, I'm struggling, you know, um, with my business. My friend said, called me 10 times. I don't want to tell him about it because I'm, I'm ashamed. I'm embarrassed. This past two weeks, man, it's like this whole entire year. Let me be honest, this, this entire year, I've been down been sad, I've been depressed, been anxious. I didn't talk to one person about it. And I'm up here telling you guys, hey, you should probably talk to someone. Didn't talk to one person about it. I stopped going to my counseling sessions. I stopped doing the things I knew I should have been doing, and I kept making it worse. And I just want to put a pause on your life right now because, hey, I don't want you to go down that same path. I feel like I wasted a year all because I was afraid to talk to someone. And I just hope you guys start designing your life by showing up for yourself. And once you show up for yourself, you can show up for many other people. So I appreciate you all. I thank you guys for your time. And thank you for sitting in the heaviness, sitting in the, the poop. <laughs> That's what I like to call it. So I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Wash your face. Go shake it off. Actually, everyone stand up real fast because it is heavy. Let's, let's stand up real fast. Ready?
Hey, give me what you got, guys. Give me what you got. Here we go. Ready? There we go. That's a little bit better. I heard one person. I appreciate you all. Hope you guys have a great day. Thank you.